Simply put, HRSM's mission is just to provide the best orthopedic care that we can. Our motto is to keep bodies in motion. It's whatever we can do to keep people healthy, keep them active, keep them engaged in their lifestyles, and keep them doing what they do that they enjoy. Number one priority for all of us is to make sure that patients are taken care of. We need to specialize and sort of provide a unique approach to each patient, because each patient is different. HRSM, I really truly believe, provides the best care for patients because we treat each patient individually. We try to be on the forefront of newer techniques and on the forefront of medicine and really try to provide the best treatments that are available for all of our patients. I prefer to be in a small community setting where I can really get to know my patients. I can see them not just in my office but either you know, out at the grocery store or at a bank and be able to say hey to them. Or for anybody to, to be able to come up to me and say, my neck is hurting, my back is hurting. You know, do you think it's something you could help me out with? You know, absolutely, just you know, come to the office and, and come see us. In a smaller setting or a smaller community, it's really nice to be woven into that fabric. At HROSM, we have orthopedic surgeons, sports medicine physicians, podiatrists, physical therapists, in addition to pain management physicians. We're here to provide quality and up-to-date care for patients who have sustained injuries or have illnesses that involve their bones and joints. Overall, our focus so much is making sure that the patient has a good experience when they come through. We try our best to have them be seen in a timely manner to make sure that their needs are met. And then the follow through is probably the most important to make sure that afterwards we make sure we keep up with them and that, that things happen as they're supposed to. HROSM has all patient-centered care. They have multi-specialty doctors, fellowship trained in different orthopedic aspects. Plus, we have the pain management, physical therapy. It works out really good for patients. They get the complete care in our office. Services that we have here have just recently expanded, so we now have a full range of orthopedic services as well as foot and ankle services. That's a very comprehensive group, more comprehensive than any other orthopedic group in the area. The thing for the patients, which is great, is the fact that everything that can go wrong with their body and from an orthopedic standpoint can be taken care of at Hampton Roads. The foot, the knee, the hip, the lower back all work in conjunction. So if someone has a foot problem, it, it could cause problems with their knee, hip, and back. So that appropriate referral can be then given to one of the other physicians to take care of. I can't imagine doing anything else. I really can't. I love being an orthopedic surgeon. I love the interaction that I have with patients, dealing mostly with injuries, with fractures, and taking somebody who no longer has their function and returning that function. With Hampton Roads Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the difference that separates us from other groups is the experience. What attracted me to HROSM is the wealth of the medical and orthopedic expertise available. Uh, I think we have the singular purpose to better our patients' lives. The distinctive characteristic of Hampton Roads is the fact that our group is very innovative. Every new concept, regardless whether it's pain or technology, emanates from our practice. That's probably the distinctive characteristic of Hampton Roads Orthopedics. Orthopedics is probably the most carpenter-based, which is kind of the way I grew up. When I got into medical school and was looking for which way to go, I think orthopedics was the first one that, that actually used drills and saws and things that I was used to. When I got to try orthopedics during medical school, I said, oh my goodness, this is like being back in my dad's workshop and the combination of taking care of patients, but also being able to use tools to fix things, to actually fix problems that people have with their bones and joints has been really wonderful and turned out to be a good choice for me. I like being hands-on, I like the sports medicine aspect of it, because I love the, the, using the power tools and I love the immediate feedback you get with patient care. You know, when we can take someone who basically is wheelchair by one day, the next day they're walking and you give them back their life and it's really rewarding. We always provide the most innovative care. We've been the leaders in, in almost every facet in total joints from the jiffy hip to the quad sparing knee to custom knee replacements. We've been really on the forefront of all these issues as they come through the research industry. We actually participate in a lot of research to help develop 
and test the longevity of the implants that are being used. The primary goal of Hampton Rouge is to be as innovative as we can. I have in my left hand this very shiny disc. This disc was designed to be put in the knee between the femur and the tibia. What's distinctive about this group is that none of us put this in. I've taken out a lot of these because they all failed. So you got to be able to vet a particular technology to decide whether it's good for your patient or not. Contrarily, take this implant. It's designed to solve one single problem. This goes into the tibia just like this onto my knee. This piece of equipment is truly an innovative process. We chose to put this in. We vetted it, we looked at it, we studied it to be able to discern between what's not so innovative and what truly is innovative. There's a big push for minimally invasive surgery. I think the more important point is surgery that's done properly. The word minimally actually means the least amount necessary, so the surgeries we all do, I hope, are minimal where we're doing the least amount necessary to get the job done. Do it in a way that we harm the patient as little as possible to, to get them better. In 2005, December 2005, I started doing the anterior approach. I started doing it full time in March of 2006. I believed in it, and the, most importantly, the patients did really well. I kind of became known as the hip guy, and what I'm probably most proud of it changed the way hip surgery is done in this area. The direct anterior hip is probably a great way to do a total hip replacement. And in order for a person to restore his function and begin the, his normal quality of life in the most rapid way. Probably the biggest thing that we're using these days as far as knee replacements goes with the Mako system, which is a computer navigated system. No matter how you do any of these procedures, right, number one thing you have to do is they have to be well positioned and well fixed. What the macoplasty allows you to do or helps you do is positioning the components accurately. The computer has a robotic arm that you program based on a preoperative CT scan and you can pre-plan exactly where you're going to put the implant in. The robotic arm helps guide you so that you take away only that bone that's required and you can do it through a fairly small space. And so even though I'm still doing the operation, I use this robotic arm to then assist me based on the information that I gave it so we can accurately position the components. And you can use it for both hip and knee. For shoulder disease, there are sort of three groups of patients. There is a young group. These are people who have Generally, instability is the most common significant problem that they get into, that dislocations, partial dislocations, things that happen with sports. As you get into middle age, generally begin to get problems more with their rotator cuff. And then in later life, they begin to get arthritis. And so we take care of that series of problems in this different age patient groups. So we're trying to get patients back on their feet without the surgery. But if they don't respond or they have a condition that needs surgery, we're able to provide uh, top-notch care that's amongst the, the best and most innovative that's out there. I think like most doctors, the part that I love about being an orthopedic surgeon is being able to help people. That's a big part of our job. Almost everybody that's coming in has some kind of problem. They have some kind of pain. There's some kind of issue. And what we can do can change that. And that's where I think uh, experience is so important. I honestly think there's probably not some, there's not one thing that I haven't seen or experienced in the OR. It's the, the reward of seeing the patients from the office and being thankful. It's surprising how many patients come in and give you hugs and you know, say, you changed my life. You know, um, and so that just you know, makes you want to do more of it. injuries and then there's degenerative conditions. So the most common injury is a lifting injury. So patients lift a box, shovel snow, they end up putting too much pressure on some of the discs in the back, it creates a weak spot, and they get a herniated disc. That's probably the most common injury is some sort of lifting injury. The other common problem with spine is degenerative. So you have your 70 and 80 year old patient who's been around for quite a while, develops a lot of arthritis in the back, and that creates spinal stenosis, which can be very debilitating in terms of people having pain in the legs as well as weakness in the legs. You should seek the advice of a spine surgeon if there are continued symptoms with passage of time, especially with irretractable back pain or neck pain. Unlike a, a total knee or total hip, you're dealing with very large bones, very large structures. With the spine surgery, you have to tease out the nerves. And you may have patients who have never had surgery before, and then nerves tease out quite easily. 
you may have patients with many surgeries and it make, makes it very difficult to get the scar tissue off the nerve structures and it has to be very delicate to make that happen. I always try to go towards the most difficult problems and the spine patients are some of the most difficult problems and if it turns out right, they actually are some of the most happy patients out there. I like to offer the Hampton Roads community three different things. The first one, and the most important, would be compassion. Every patient has a personalized story, and I would like to take it upon myself to listen carefully and to determine the root cause of their problem and help navigate them to the best treatment options available. Secondly, I'd like to exhaust all conservative management for any of these problems because nobody should get an operation unless they absolutely have to. The last facet of my practice would be my commitment to ensure that the patient has the best possible experience and the best technical outcome. I was volunteering at a hospital in the Shenandoah Valley and a good number of those people came into the hospital and they had diabetes and had other problems with their feet and their legs and a good number of them were so far gone that they'd wind up losing their legs. It really kind of shocked me that people who had diabetes could wind up losing parts of their limbs because of lower extremity complications. What I like is people come in and they can't walk, exercise, and you, you can take someone who's having trouble doing what they love and you can get them back moving. And it's usually pretty quickly. Well, we're basically a very wide spectrum practice. We will treat anybody. I've, I've treated two-week-old babies to 104-year-olds and I treat everything from an ingrown nail to ankle fractures, flat foot surgery, trauma, biomechanics, sports medicine. I personally do a lot of surgery, but I also do a lot of what's called wound care. So I treat a lot of wounds. And you know, I've had people come with wounds for 10 years that we've healed in six months just because they haven't had the appropriate care. These patients to me are kind of like a puzzle. And if you can kind of unmask some of the issues that they have, then you can put together the proper program and get them better. Nowadays, everybody wants to be active. If your feet hurt and you're walking differently, that affects your knees, your hips, your back. So by getting someone's foot better, that gets them back to being active. Well, we try to size up exactly what their lifestyle is, what their goals are, and everybody's a different person. We need to go ahead and kind of customize our way of treating them to help them get better. So it's all about the patient. The, the big thing with being a podiatrist is you get to help people right away. A lot of times they, they come in and they can't walk and they leave and they're walking and they're doing better. They're happy and that's all people want to be able to do is get back to their life and get back to activities. Pain is something that's built within us to let us know that something is not functioning the way that we want it to. And that doesn't mean that all life needs to halt at that moment. My job is to provide as many options as possible for those patients so that you're tailoring it to their injury or the treatment that they need without putting them at more harm's risk by trying to help them in, in that process. I believe in treating every person that comes into the office as an individual taking the time to listen to someone's story and hear how the pain is impacting his or her life, figuring out a plan that's tailored specifically to that person to improve quality of life and restore function. I treat many different types of pain, pain from the spinal column, including the neck and the low back, as well as the peripheral joints, such as the shoulders, hips, and knees. The pain could be due to arthritis, spinal stenosis, a herniated disc, or a problem with the nerves. 20, 25 years ago, there were not many options, either pain medicine or surgery. But nowadays, there are several new aspects open up to manage the patients besides putting them on a high dose of narcotic pain medicine or go with the surgical options. My specialty is sports medicine and pain management. That allows me to help my patients from younger kids who is in school, have some injuries or some older people with the acute and chronic lower back or neck pain. My specialty allows me to help them get better and go back to their routine life without having much pain. So the patient that would typically come to me as an interventional physician would be anyone from a weekend warrior who is middle-aged and you know, just getting injured either with repetitive injury or something that they really enjoy and they love to do. The other population would be 
your aging population, that we all, you know, at, at some point in time, you know, get to uh, the point of joints that hurt, degenerative changes, and arthritis that is a normal part of aging. I believe in a many-sided treatment approach to pain, which uses medications, physical therapy, minimally invasive procedures, and alternative therapies as well. If you look at their lifestyle, most of the people nowadays are involved in some kind of activities. They would like to be physically fit. When they are in a pain, they can't keep up with their activities. They cannot keep up with their job or with their kids. So it's very important that we get them out of pain, put them back into their routine life. It gives me a great satisfaction that I really made a difference and we put them back to their routine. I want to do everything that I can to help people who suffer from chronic pain get back to doing the things that they love and want desperately to be able to do again. physical therapy, at least here at Hampton Rose Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, is twofold. We try to help a patient to avoid surgery, if at all possible. However, if the necessity arises for somebody to have surgery, we're of course are here to rehabilitate them from that surgery and try to get them back to their full potential. Our clinic is very special because as a group we have over a hundred years of experience between us. We provide one-on-one -on -one service. If you come here for your therapy, you will have a licensed therapist, either a PT or a PT assistant, perform your treatments with you every visit. When patients go for outpatient care, it relies on that therapist contacting us or us contacting them. When the patients come here to our therapist, the therapist can simply just walk around the corner and we can kind of brainstorm together and we can adapt our treatment program on the fly to that much more quickly, much more readily. So many of the things that we see are the result of exercising, overuse, sometimes, you know, the use of therapy to get people back, especially after surgery, that, that's huge. Getting people's range of motion back so they can function and walk correctly. So if you can get them into therapy, get them moving and get them back to their everyday activity that's always beneficial. Our staff has been together for over 12 years. They're people that I know I can depend on to do a great job in any situation. And it goes for the whole staff. The whole staff is, is really outstanding. Most everybody is willing to bend over backwards to help anybody in here perform to their utmost ability. An MRI is a magnetic resonance imaging. It's a procedure that uses radio waves, a strong magnetic field, and gradients to make an image of the soft tissues of the body to be able to see acute injuries or chronic conditions in the body. So the MRI gives me the soft tissue diagnosis that I cannot make with plain films. So it's helpful when anything that's a soft tissue problem or perhaps even a fluid problem, that's where I get most of the help from the MRI. Our MRI is multi-positional and it's an open MRI. There are several old people or people with the claustrophobia, they cannot go through the MRI tunnel. In that case, we order this open MRI that allows them to just sit and watch TV while MRI is scanning their particular body part. And by end of their test, they, they don't even realize that, that they had MRI done. Hampton Roads Orthopedic MRI is quicker turnaround for patients. They can have same day exams. It's done in this office, so the patients don't have to go to different offices to get procedures done. Well, patients that need MRIs uh, frequently are in pain. They want to have their problem addressed. Some of the other hospital system MRIs, oftentimes people have to wait two weeks to get the testing done. And now they'll go ahead and they'll keep the MRI here open 8, 9 o'clock at night, Saturdays, Sundays. So really it's all about accommodating the patients and servicing them. At HRSM, we actually have an entire department dedicated to workers' compensation. Workers' comp is a very complex issue. There's many parts involved. The role of the workers' compensation department is to streamline the difficulties of an injured worker when they're injured at work, 
with the employer, the case managers, and the insurers. My role was to come here and help the doctors work their way through that maze. Workers' compensation patients are a very special group of patients. Our main goal is to get the patient back to work in a safe manner, in a speedy manner, so that they can function at work in their normal capacity. The advantages of having our physicians handle the workers' compensation claims is that they now have an understanding of what is needed both by the patient, by the insurer or the employer when there's an occupational injury. The responsibility of the employees to report their injury as soon as possible, to get medical treatment as soon as possible, and we have to make sure that the injured worker is authorized and they're covered and they're not responsible for a large medical bill. You know, with workers' compensation, we do understand that there is a lot of costs involved on both sides, and we do try to be sympathetic and understanding of both sides of that. You know, the uh, employee is missing out on time at work, and they're missing out on their income, so we want to try and take care of them to return them back to work as soon as possible. If at any time someone is injured, and they're not quite sure whether or not it's an occupational injury, it can be very confusing. When they come to see a doctor, if they feel for any reason that it could be an occupational injury, they should tell the doctor so they can actually send the patient to my department and we can help walk them through the steps that they need to go through in order to determine whether or not they did sustain a compensable injury with their employer.